Welcome back to another lab day. So today we're going to be doing the multi-step reaction and I got to tell you the pressure is on right now because after the last couple of videos I felt like I needed to up my game. So I've invested in better microphones, I got some more camera equipment, a new tripod, and uh, all this pressure is making me tongue-tied. Now all of a sudden I can't talk. It's hard to explain just the chemistry that we're doing. Oh my God, it's so hard. All right, I'm not a filmmaker, I'm a chemist. So I'm just gonna tell you what it is that we're gonna do. We're doing multi-step. Multi-step, the reason that we do this reaction is that we are looking here to uh, teach you how to take a product and to move it along through a big project where we take uh, a starting material, in this case, benzaldehyde, we react it with base and thiamine hydrochloride, a catalyst that we'll talk about uh, in another little segment in the video here. That catalyst converts the benzaldehyde into benzoin. I have to think when I say these names because these names all start with B and they're all very similar. We're gonna make benzoin, that's our first product. Once we get the benzoin and we isolate it, then we take benzoin and we oxidize it into benzyl. Benzyl then is isolated, characterized, and we further convert the benzyl into benzylic acid, and that will be our final product. And what we're looking at is we're looking to see what is our yield over the three steps? How well can we maintain our, um, our skill set in the lab in order to get high yields of the final product? Well, we have to get a high yield all the way through because the yields multiply by each other in order to tell you what your final yield is overall over the three steps. So that's our challenge. We're gonna get started. First up is taking benzaldehyde and reacting it with thiamine hydrochloride to convert it into benzoin. I'll see you over at the balance where we get started with thiamine hydrochloride. All right, we're over here at the balance and we've got the thiamine hydrochloride. Now thiamine hydrochloride is stored in the fridge. It is a sensitive uh, product that uh, degrades if it gets too hot. So we're gonna weigh it out. We're gonna get it back in the fridge pretty quick. Thiamine hydrochloride is a coenzyme in vitamin B. We're going to weigh out 0.3 grams of this material and we're going to throw it into an Erlenmeyer flask. And the Erlenmeyer flask is going to be our uh, reaction vessel this time. This is just going to sit and do its thing over a couple of days. Doesn't need any stirring, doesn't need anything fancy. We're just going to mix all the components and, uh, and then we're going to stopper it and we're going to let it sit. But before we stopper it, I just want to mention really quick I got two different types of stoppers here, cork stopper and rubber stopper. Most of the time, almost always, exclusively, we're going to go for a cork stopper. Now, why? Why do we go for a cork stopper? Well, the answer to that is that rubber stoppers are an organic material. They uh, are an organic polymer, and they suck up organic salts like a sponge. So they tend to expand, and, uh, and as they expand, they degrade, and they drop all kinds of stuff into our chemical reaction. So, most of the time, throw the rubber stoppers away. We don't use those. We go for the cork stoppers. Uh, the cork, being a natural wood product, does not absorb the organic chemicals in the same way, does not expand, and uh, seals much better for most of the things that we're going to be doing. We're going to weigh out 0.3 grams of this material. We're going to get it into the Erlenmeyer flask, and then we'll move on to our next step. As always, we're doing the same thing, weighing paper, corner to corner, always making a weighing boat. Go ahead and get that on the balance and tear it. Always working through both sides of the balance with the reagent bottle over the weighing paper. We want about 0.3 grams. It's a catalyst. So if we are a little over or a little under, no harm, no foul. I'm about 0.24 right now. And the material is super light and super fluffy. So it's hard to even tell when the spatula gets into the material. Okay, there we go. We'll close the doors, let this come to equilibrium. Let's get a shot. We'll see what our mass is. Point three zero seven. Just waiting for the beep, letting it settle. 
two, one. There we go. Let's get that written down. All right, I'll see you over at the fume hood. All right, we're over here at the fume hood and our procedure calls for adding 0.45 milliliters of DI water, three milliliters of 95% ethanol, and then activating the catalyst with 0.9 milliliters of two molar sodium hydroxide. Each one of these components are gonna add into the thymine hydrochloride before we ever add in the benzaldehyde. So we'll go through and we'll make those additions. And because those additions are all sort of awkward numbers a little bit, I'm gonna use Plurenges in order to help me do each one of the transfers. So the first thing that we do is add in about 0.45 milliliters of water. We'll do that using the Plurenge. Add in the water there, set that aside, and we'll give it a little bit of shake to help it dissolve. We want it to dissolve in that little bit of water first before we add the ethanol. Okay, now three mils of 95% ethanol. So the water is to aid in the solubility of the thiamine hydrochloride. As its name implies, thiamine hydrochloride, it's ionic, and it needs some water to help it dissolve before we add in the ethanol. Now three mils of ethanol, so we'll do this in two transfers. Actually, I can get it all in one. No, I can't. I'll take that back. We'll do two mils and then one mil. All right, close transfers. Always practicing good skill sets. Add in the two mils. We'll go back, we'll grab one more. Three mils of 95% ethanol. Give it a little swirl, dissolve it, try to get anything that was on the sides, make sure that everything is dissolved into the flask. Okay, now we're gonna add in the base. We want 0.9 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. This is to deprotonate the thiamine hydrochloride and create the active catalyst that is going to react with the benzaldehyde. 0.9 mils of this. Close transfer. You'll see a color change. So we'll see it go, my hand's in the way, we'll see it go to yellow, fairly bright yellow. That yellow is going to fade uh, as time goes on here. And once it fades, we'll swirl it a little bit. Once it fades, then we'll go ahead and we'll add the benzaldehyde. But before we can add the benzaldehyde, we're gonna wanna get a good mass of the benzaldehyde because that's gonna be our starting material. So we're gonna take this over to the balance. We're gonna tear it. We'll come back, we'll add the benzaldehyde, and then we'll reweigh it to get the actual mass of benzaldehyde that we add. So I'll see you over at the balance. All right, we're back over here at the balance and I thought I would give you just a quick sort of shot of what this material is looking like. Yes, there's a little bit of material that's solid that is uh, settling out on the sides of the flask. I think that's gonna be okay. We're gonna get our tear weight on this uh, and then after we get the tear weight, we'll get it back over and we'll get the benzaldehyde into it and we'll get this reaction going. Oop, wrong way on the zoom. Zoom back out. All right, let's get our tear weight. I want to make sure the balance is teared first at zero. Good to go.
All right, we're back over here at the fume hood and we're gonna do the benzaldehyde transfer. Now the benzaldehyde is in secondary containment here and it has a material that is over the lid called parafilm. Benzaldehyde being an aromatic aldehyde is very sensitive to oxidation. It auto oxidizes in air to benzoic acid. And uh, in order to prevent that auto oxidation, we try to seal it up as best we can when we're not using it. So in between uses, we always parafilm it and seal it up solidly. So to get at it, we gotta get this parafilm off, which is not always the easiest with gloves on. But you kinda grab at it, take it off. Okay, we're good. So we want 0.9 milliliters. The 0.9 milliliters, we are going to use the pluringe again in order to get 0.9 milliliters of the benzaldehyde. get our vessel ready to uh, transfer to, make sure that we can see the volume that we're pulling up into the syringe. We'll pull up 0.9 milliliters, we'll transfer that in a closed transfer. Nothing exciting happens when it's added. This is a reaction that takes a couple of days. So the thymine hydrochloride, in order to do its job, takes quite a bit of time. And so we don't really expect to see anything exciting happen here. As we add that, we'll swirl it around a little bit, let it dissolve. The whole system goes pretty homogeneous. Slight straw yellow color to it. We'll cap it. And we'll go get a mass on how much benzaldehyde we just added. All right, we've got our thymine hydrochloride and added benzaldehyde, and this is just to get the mass of the benzaldehyde that was added to the chemical reaction. Thirty-four point three five three nine two, we'll call it. Let's get that recorded. Okay, that is it for this synthesis. This is a really short, easy little synthesis in order to do. Uh, we have the benzaldehyde now in our 95% ethanol aqueous solution with base, thiamine hydrochloride. The thiamine hydrochloride is going to catalyze the uh, condensation of the benzaldehyde to form benzoin. And we're just gonna let it go for a couple of days. So we're gonna put a good label on this that indicates what the chemical reaction is. I'm going to set it up in the fume hood for a couple of days, and I think I'm going to try and uh, see if we can get a time lapse over those couple of days. We'll see how that goes. Fingers crossed that that actually works out. All right, other than that, we'll see you back here for the isolation when, uh, when those couple of days are over. Okay, so we've made a few notes in the notebook regarding the benzoin synthesis. The um, benzaldehyde is now sitting with the thiamine hydrochloride and uh, the base catalyst. That's gonna go for a couple of days. We've got things recorded. We've got a time-lapse video on that. Hopefully that's gonna work out. And we'll check on it in a couple of days. Come back on Friday and, and see how that's looking. From there, we'll take that material and we'll turn it into uh, benzyl. And that'll be the next reaction that we look at in the oxidation with nitric acid of benzoin to benzylic acid. Okay, we'll see you back here in the lab when we get to that.